This is one of our favorites right at the moment. Andrew sitting down over there is the one who was responsible for it. This is down at Coomera, on the Coomera River. We're rather fond of this thing. Um, you can see the before shot. It was a 70s box house sitting on, would you believe, Coomera River. The site is worth probably two million bucks. Amazing, just incredible place. But we couldn't knock down the house, and I wouldn't want to anyway, because it's really solid. The owner said, look, I inherited this from my father, I want to keep it. And I'm going to give it to my kids when we finish with this, and hopefully you're going to help me, Peter. So, I came up with this mad idea. How about we add to the building, to one end? Because the site was really strangely shaped. It was wedge shaped. It was thin at the front and very wide at the back. And the house wasn't taking any advantage of this. So, Andrew and I came up with this crazy idea. Let's stick on this wedge shaped addition. So it's got this narrow new entry zone leading into a very expensive living zone. And the existing house is now all bedrooms. Didn't cost a lot of money to do this. Would you believe, including the pool, this is $570,000. We thought that was a pretty good price, actually. What I want you to learn from this slide, though, is extensions change what they come from and what they go to. The existing house, we did change. We had to, because it was going to change its function. We shifted the living spaces dramatically. That's why it became an advantage to turn the house into bedroom. Where we went to was this unused wedge shape. So we made the building respond to that. It, got, it grew wider and it has big glass in it to see the river. It sucks in breezes like you wouldn't believe. It's amazing. When we were there about three weeks ago, they didn't have the air conditioning on because they said, we don't turn it on. We've only turned it on twice this year. Those, do you remember that horrible weekend in February where it was really hot? That's the only time they've turned on the air conditioning. Amazing. So, extensions can really change a property dramatically, but they've got to be considered about what they, where they come from and where they go to. Here's an up, as in adding something to the top of a building. This is actually in Spring Hill, behind, sort of behind and amongst, an 1890s cottage. Now you normally can't do much to the cottages at the front, but this was allowed to be done at the back. This was a while ago, by the way, Ms. Charles. So it wasn't quite the current rules, it was a while ago. Anyway, what we did was, there was a dining space underneath a lean-to roof. We wanted to knock down the lean-to roof and then put this three-storey element there. It was a good idea, as it turned out, because the dining room space was falling down from termite infestation to the max. Luckily, no, they weren't anywhere else in the house. So the builder came on site, hit it with a sledgehammer, the whole thing fell down. That was good. The demolition took about half a, half a day instead of about three days. So the three-storey thing we put there was, down the bottom is a massive tank, because the backyard was already landscaped brilliantly, gorgeous, by our landscape architect we know. The middle zone we repeated as the dining room. Above that, we put a master wing, which is what they desperately needed. This was a very cost-effective way to change an existing building. The other thing we did was we twisted the back deck because the backyard had already been landscaped and it was on a slight twist, so we twisted the deck. Seems obvious now, but at the time it wasn't. By the way, um, your speaker from one o'clock has just arrived. Famous, famous Mark, um, brilliant architect. He's going to tell you all about your grand house at one o'clock. Going down. Here's a classic lift and build in. Now I want to tell you a few stories here. The first one is, they're not cheap. Most lift and buildings cost no less than $400,000. This one cost a little over six hundred dollars because this was a while ago prior to the GFC. They cost so much because you are doubling the size of the house. You're building a lot of building, a lot of floor area. And usually you're going to change the kitchen, do the two and a half bathrooms, probably add a deck, probably do a pool, before you know it, they add up. But, and it's a big but, you're protecting the yard. The footprint of the site 
is the house. So therefore, brilliant house for a family because you need yards for the kids to run around. And if you can figure out a way to do this so the kids can run around the house as well, you know that, most mums know that kids run around houses endlessly. So don't, try not to block them off. The other thing I want you to learn about lift and buildings is, please, please, don't put weatherboards to the ground on them. Because that looks weird. Because when these houses were done, they didn't have two stories of weatherboards, ever. Although there's one, I know of, in, up near uh, the Governor's residence on Fernberg Road. When they did do it, they broke them up with bay windows and awnings and other things to make them look less horrible out of scale. On this house, it's a bit hard to see, yeah, I think, but the, the lower story has been clad with flax sheet, just cheap hardy flax. And we put cover strips on it. So it has a monolithic look about it and less like it's been brought to the ground. And it also looks like it's holding up the house. The other th trick we did was we put verandas on the bottom. So it also broke the building up. So you can read the original and read the new. That's a heritage principle, by the way. 